right, folks. Um, we're, I've got uh, two minutes after uh, 10 a.m. Central. I think we'll go ahead and, and get started, and uh, uh, folks will join us as we, uh, as we move forward. Uh, welcome again to the Discussion on Integrated Water Management webinar. This is part of our Integrated Water Management webinar series, which is being co-sponsored by the Greater Lakes, Reconnecting the Great Lakes Water Cycle Project, and the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. My name is Melissa Soline. I'm a program manager with the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. I also have on the line with me uh, Laura Bretheim of our Chicago office. She's going to be managing the webinar uh, from the technical perspective uh, for us today. Uh, before we launch into the webinar, I'd just like to go over a bit of housekeeping. Uh, first, this webinar is going to be recorded, uh, and we'll be posting uh, the recording on our, our website after uh, for folks to, uh, to reference. We're also going to be taking notes today to try and capture uh, you know, some of the main points and key elements uh, that come up during our discussion. The format of the webinar is going to be a bit different uh, than our usual. It's going to be more of a, a facilitated conference call, if you will. Uh, we're going to keep all the lines muted during the presentation portion of the webinar. That's going to be about the first 20 minutes or so. And then after that, we're going to unmute everyone's line uh, for the discussion portion. We'll just ask that when we are in the discussion portion of the webinar, uh, you mute, mute your own phone when you aren't speaking uh, so that we reduce any background noise. Uh, and when you do make a comment during the discussion, uh, we just ask that you uh, state your name and, and your affiliation so we know who's speaking. We will do a, a brief uh, sort of roll call or, or introduction uh, once we unmute all the lines so we, we know who all is on the line. And as you can see on the agenda, uh, if you experience any technical problems during the webinar, please feel free to email me. I'll, uh, I'll try my best to help you out uh, as we go forward. So with that, again, I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, we're excited to be uh, working on this issue of integrated water management with the Greater Lakes Project and uh, Project Manager John Jackson. Uh, John is going to be giving us some insight on the Greater Lakes Project in a bit. But I just wanted to give a, a little bit of background on the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative and our work on water issues for those folks that may not be uh, familiar with us. The Cities Initiative is a coalition of 114 Canadian and U.S. mayors working to advance the protection and restoration of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River. We are uh, eager to be partnering with the Great Lakes Commission, with John, and, and all the project partners on the Greater Lakes Project because it's really emphasized uh, the need for this more holistic approach to water management in our cities and towns. We've touched on the issue in a number of our uh, programs and initiatives, like our sustainable municipal water management effort, uh, our municipal adaptation and resiliency service, and our work on water conservation. But uh, I think the Greater Lakes Project is really helping to elevate the conversation around integrated water management and help to pinpoint uh, obstacles and barriers and, and the needs of, of municipalities as they try and uh, take, take on this, this issue of integrated water management. So today we're going to hear a brief presentation from John Jackson, project manager of the Greater Lakes Project. He's going to provide some background and then uh, help kick off our discussion uh, on the topic. Uh, generally, the goals of our call today are, are first to gain a better understanding of, of whether cities are uh, starting to in, engage in integrated water management or, or starting to consider this approach. Uh, secondly, we want to get a better understanding of obstacles uh, that municipalities are facing. And then third, gain a better sense of, of what cities need in terms of resources, uh, support, whether it be technical or financial, uh, in order to help move forward with integrated water management. Our hopes are that this discussion and, and subsequent discussions with other municipalities will help shape the remaining work uh, on the Greater Lakes Project so that we can provide <clears throat> the support that municipalities need um, as they explore water management more, more, um, uh, in more detail. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've uh, developed my spring allergies. I was telling uh, John and folks before the call started. <clears throat> so uh, with that, I'm going to turn things over to John. Uh, we'll kick off uh, John's presentation, and then uh, after that, we'll start our discussion. John. Okay, thank you, Melissa. We really appreciate having the opportunity to, to do this work with you, and it's been very valuable for us. Uh, let me I'll first uh, just briefly introduce our project, and if we can go to the next slide, please. 
the, this, this project is, has been funded by the Great Lakes Protection Fund. It, it's a, a project where we have completed two years of it, and that two years was really a basic exploration. And we're now in, in the stage of, of really getting the products out and, and getting more heavily engaged with the communities. And it's uh, housed with the Great Lakes Commission. The project goals are, are listed here, and there are really three of them, to get a better understanding of both the environmental and financial implications of water conservation activities and green infrastructure projects by testing them in six municipalities. So we are, are working uh, primarily in six municipalities. Three of those are in Ontario, in the Grand River Watershed, Guelph, uh, Kitchener, Waterloo area. and um, three of them are in Oakland County, Michigan, uh, just north of Detroit. But our objective is to be uh, getting what we learn there and the messages from our, our learnings there across the entire Great Lakes Basin. That, that is our purpose, is to be able to help people all across the basin. And so our second goal is to, to share those lessons that we've learned uh, with other municipalities across the basin. And a a major part of our work also is to figure out what are the best techniques for sharing that information um, during the project and once the project is completed as well um, in, in terms of keeping things going. So those are our, our goals. But what I want to focus on today is integrated water management. And if we can go to the next slide. One of the things as we've gone through the project, and as Melissa said also with, with the work that the cities have been doing, is coming to an understanding of how a critically important taking a more integrated approach to dealing with water management issues is if we're going to be successful. And the really the first component that is driving that is the recognition that the way in which we have typically designed our, our municipalities, particularly our urban areas, is that we've, we've fractured, we've disrupted the natural water systems in ways that have had a substantial negative environmental impacts and also have a negative impacts uh, for our municipalities in terms of the, the financial costs that are involved and also in terms of things like flash floods, et cetera, that happen because of uh, the, the ways in which we have designed our infrastructure systems. So we want to be taking an integrated view of the water system, which means that when we're doing our basic decision making in municipalities, we need to be looking at the water supply component, the storm water component, and the wastewater component, all three. It doesn't mean that you carry out the details of them all combined as one, but to recognize how they affect each other, how a decision we make on storm water for example, may disrupt water supply by perhaps driving it away so that we're not restoring our water supply. Uh, and the, so this sort of recognition that the decisions we make on each of them need to make sure, first of all, that they're not working at counter purposes with each other, but beyond that, in a positive sense, to make sure that they're supporting each other. And that's why in our overall planning and decision making, we need to look at all three at once. Can we go on to the next slide now, please? Other components in terms of this is that because uh, a real objective for us in terms of integrated water management is to be improving not just conditions within the municipalities and within the cities, but be improving the environmental well-being of our communities as well, uh, which is an integrated part of our being in livable communities and communities that we enjoy living in. And therefore, that we have to put a higher priority on water conservation and efficiency measures and on green infrastructure measures than we have in the past. We tend to look at these now as sort of nice fringe add-ons, but we have to see that they're central components of the whole system, not just uh, some, some add-ons. We also need to combine short and long-term perspectives. Often, what may seem in the short term to not be a good use of money, uh, for example, uh, getting into recycling of water, um, if you look at it from a long-term perspective, both in terms of the environment and from the perspective of the financial costs, it may well be 
uh, extremely worth making that investment now in order to avoid problems in the future and costs in the future. I'll give you a very simple example where in the region of Waterloo, uh, where, where I happen to live, uh, but in the region of Waterloo, they have put a t high priority on water conservation measures, water efficiency measures, and as a result, the plans that they had been making to build a pipeline out to Lake Erie, which they were estimating would cost about a billion dollars, keeps being put off further and further into the future. And in their re most recent update, they said, uh, we suspect we'll never need to build that pipeline. So their current investments are saving them in water efficiency, are saving them huge dollars in terms of the long term. We also, again, because of uh, municipal needs and municipal situations, recognize our need to combine both environmental and financial perspectives, that we need to be working uh, with both at the once, taking those into account. And finally, for an integrated water management perspective, we need to make sure that we are pulling thinking at a watershed level, because that's where things ultimately integrate. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, go to go one more click into it. The actually one more as well. Perfect. Okay. The w the more natural water cycles are what was here before we started putting pavement etc. Around uh, is one where you, you've seen the charts, more beautiful charts than this. You'll see a, a more beautiful one in a second. Um, but the idea that the natural movement down into the ground when precipitation happens and back up into uh, restoring the marshes, restoring rivers, lakes, et cetera, and evaporation back up into the air. But let's go to the, the, next, uh, the next part on this. The way in which we, this is the water use cycle. So our taking of water from groundwater, uh, from, uh, from lakes, from rivers, et cetera, means that we have cut off uh, a, a part of that infiltration that happens into restoring the groundwater. Uh, we've, we've moved it back above ground more quickly than we should have and because of our water use, uh, water supply, et cetera. And then the next one again, the final on this. And this is the, uh, a different component. This is the component, the interrupted water cycle, is the component when we're talking about storm water. What happens when the, the water flows on the ground? It's not only uh, falls from rain, for example. It's not only the water that we take out uh, to uh, use for our human uses, but in addition, we interrupt the water cycle by trying to find a way to get the water off the roads, off of our municipalities as quickly as possible through pipes, et cetera, out to the, the river, out to the lake. And therefore, we interrupt that water cycle of going into the ground in the first place. Uh, let's go on to the, the next slide now. So the next few slides are put together by the Credit Valley Conservation Authority. And they are doing some phenomenal work uh, in this field of low impact development, integrated water management, et cetera. So some really amazing work. And I urge you to go to their website to see a lot of information on this. But what they are showing here is that in the natural system, when it's natural ground cover rather than the ground cover we've created, that about 40% of what happens from a rainfall, for example, goes back up into the air, part of it through direct evaporation, part of it through transpiration from the trees, et cetera, uh, as, as those, their systems operate. But that only about 10% is direct runoff to the rivers and lakes, and 50% goes into restoring the water supplies below the surface of the ground, both into the deep aquifers and into the shallow infiltration. And this is critically important in terms of the well-being of the environment and the well-being of our environmental supplies, because that is water that then gradually comes out to the needs that we have. The next slide. This is the way in which in our municipalities and in our urban areas, uh, we have 
redesigned and changed that, that water cycle, that normal natural water cycle. The first thing is, is that of course, we have all these impervious, impervious cover that we have put over the good land. So 30 to 50% of the, the surface in our municipalities is now impervious. It's from things like roads, it's parking lots, it's um, what's coming off of the roofs and, and, and is then put into a storm sewer and sent off somewhere. And even, even the lawns, even heavily compacted lawns where uh, they aren't as porous to allow the infiltration to go in, uh, a lot of that is, has become impervious as well. So when you look at that and the impact of those impervious surfaces, the, what goes back into the air after rainfall is still fairly close to what it was in the slide we had before. In the slide before, it was 40%. Uh, here it's 35 But the big change is in runoff. On the previous slide, in the natural system, it was a 10% runoff. Here, we're getting a 30% of that flow from the water runs off. And what that means is it's either go, it's going into our pipe systems to try to get it off, and, and we get situations like our, our piping systems hit over capacity, and, and therefore we start getting flash floods when there's a, a big downpour. And, um, and we also get major impacts by that rush of water into the rivers or lakes where it, it creates uh, erosion because of the speed at which it's going out and again disrupts that natural cycle of our, our rivers and our lakes. And here also the infiltration uh, down into the, the groundwater has been reduced substantially. Here you're seeing it's 35 percent and most of that is going to shallow infiltration. On the more natural system it was 50 percent and a substantially bigger por por portion of that I was going into the deeper aquifers. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this is the idea, and again, using the work from the Credit Valley Conservation Authority, of, of a more integrated system. And our objective here is to change the way in which water flows in our municipalities to, uh, to mimic, to be more like the, uh, the normal hydrological system. And what this does is it reduces the, the pressures on our infrastructure as well as helping to restore the environment. So what we do are things like, for example, treat it uh, where it falls. And the idea here is, so when it comes down on the, on the roof of our houses, let's look at that in terms of rainwater harvesting. Perhaps we can use some of that instead of just you know, shifting it off uh, down into the sewers, perhaps we can use some of that to, for, for uses. You often hear it now, uh, you know, let's put it in the rain barrels and you know, water your backyard or whatever, but let's look at broader uses of it as well. Uh, people are increasingly uh, putting it in, in, in institutions to flush their toilets, you know, catching this water uh, in cisterns and, and flushing the toilets in, in them, uh, those sorts of things. What other uses can we make? The other thing is in terms of uh, the parking lots and the roads when they fall there. And the idea here is to increase the ability of the, the roadsides, the ability of parking lots to be built in ways that allow it to infiltrate. So porous parking lots, um, building, building roads that have a porous material, or having in, the, instead along the, as well, along the ditches, uh, deliberately designing them so that they uh, can actually catch the water, hold it there, and let it gradually infiltrate into the, the water below instead of having to be swept away immediately uh, through things such as, uh, these are often called rain gardens, but they're much more sophisticated ways in which we're doing them that these days. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, and, and hit the, the next button as well. So again, to look at this in a bit of a the natural water balance system, the, the first one is showing um, the, the way in which uh, the precipitation in the, the more natural system happens. It's similar to what I just described to you. Let's go to the next one. 
And here you're seeing the ways in which we've disrupted. The, the blue ones are the water that is still left in its fairly natural state. And basically, uh, in the way in which we've been traditionally doing, there's not much left in the natural state except what's falling to the ground. But we are, are seeing major human disruption of the system by the, 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 the water we import uh, for use that we take out of the system to do that. So there's much less infiltration into the system. But we instead also are getting a huge increase in the wastewater discharge that comes out of our water use and out of our homes and our industries, uh, which is increasing again that quick sort of flow uh, away from the area in which it normally would have infiltrated. And you're seeing the substantial reduction here in the infiltration in the center. And again, in terms of runoff, uh, finding a huge amount that's, that's going off uh, into the, the rivers and lakes very quickly. Go to the next slide. So that's the idea here of trying to uh, redesign our cities in ways that get it back closer to the natural system. And so part of that is naturally increasing the infiltration. You see the blue arrow at the bottom has, has grown for natural infiltration because we have more we have more uh, pervious surfaces. But you also see starting to do things like reducing our use of potable water. If you look up on the, the left-hand side, we've reduced the amount of potable water, which means that we are allowing more water to be where it naturally was uh, in, in, the, in the environment. Also, to be looking at when we um, re discharge our wastewater, to be looking at Let's see how we can reuse some of that instead of it all having to go out. You find some municipalities now, uh, not so much here as in places that are feeling more desperately uh, drought and, and the need for it, actually are putting in sophisticated treatment systems to be able to reuse their water. And here in terms of re around wastewater, so treatment systems around that. So let's go now to the right-hand side. And this is the, no, don't switch yet, sorry. <laughs> OK, thanks. Uh, on the right-hand side, if you look at, this is the storm water. So this is the water that falls to the ground, and we try to get rid of it quickly. And first of all, the amount of that is reduced much more because we're letting more infiltration happen. But even in terms of what we still have there, we find ways to use some of that storm water. And for example, here, the idea that uh, you collect that storm water, put it into other uses. I, I know a, an area here in Kitchener, for example, where people are collecting the storm water uh, actually off the, the roofs of their houses and are redirecting that to their community garden because one of the major problems community gardens often have is access to water. There's often not a pipe there. There's often not a tap there. They've provided their own system by collecting the rainwater off of all of their roofs and getting it there. Or we can use it to flush toilets, as I said earlier, so we, we've reduced the amount of runoff. OK, the next slide. And this is just an example of uh, some areas in Oakland, County, in Oakland County, actually, in Michigan, where they have redesigned roads to, so that they have what they call these interceptor stormwater systems, which are what people often refer to as their uh, your rain gardens, and have been very effective at um, reducing the need as a result of that. So finally, the final slide is to uh, summarize sort of our definition of integrated water management, and then we can get into our discussion. Uh, so we look at integrated water management as a, a planning and decision-making process that recognizes that drinking water, wastewater, and storm water are all part of the same cycle and need to be dealt with at once. We need to plan all components of the cycle at once so we ensure that they are part of an integrated system in which they are working to support each other rather than at cross purposes. IWM also has as a goal to restore the natural water cycle. To achieve this, IWM has as central components of its overall system water efficiency and reduced water use and green infrastructure systems. This means that municipalities 
simultaneously enhance the environment, avoid potential problems such as flash floods and water supply scarcities, and decrease municipal costs. IWM requires simultaneously addressing both short-term and long-term goals and is best achieved at a watershed level. So Melissa, I'd like to leave it at that and, and turn it back into your hands for getting our discussion going. Great. Thank you, John. Uh, we're going to keep this uh, definition of integrated water management up uh, as we launch into our discussion. Um, just bear with us for a minute as we uh, start to unmute the full <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I'm going to ask Laura to start uh, unmuting everybody. And again, I'll ask uh, folks that are on the line to just mute your own phone uh, so that we reduce any background noise. Uh, so we'll just take a minute to do that. And then once we do have uh, everybody unmuted, Laura, just let me know. And we're just going to do a quick, um, I'd like folks to just uh, introduce yourselves, name and, and your affiliation. Uh, we'll just go around quickly so that we uh, know who we're speaking with. Laura, does it seem like everybody's uh, unmuted? Yes, we're all set. There are a few folks who have just received an audio pin informa uh, piece of information, so you'll be able to use that to uh, uh, have control over your audio throughout this time. But we are all ready to go. And it does look like John may be muted now. I don't know if that's showing correctly on my screen. Yeah, I was Oh, there you go. OK. <laughs> yeah, Melissa, I was just saying that uh, it's yeah. probably easiest if you do it by category so people aren't afraid or by geography so people aren't talking over top of each other as much. Ah, okay. We can do the um, go around. So sure, no, by that's state great. or province or whatever. Sure. Um, let's see. I, I don't have that information in front of me, but how about we start with our um, our municipal representatives, folks uh, that are joining us uh, from municipalities? Could you please start us off? And you'll have to unmute your own phone to. <laughs> Any of the cities on the line want to introduce themselves? Hi there, this is Thomas Nanigo from the city of Mississauga. Hi, Thomas. Hello. <laughs> yeah, we, we did hear you, Thomas. Any other municipal representatives? Hi, this is Brenda Scott Henry from the city of Gary. Hi, Brenda. Anyone from Ajax, uh, Racine, or Cornwall? I know we had registrants from there, from those locations. OK, we may jump ahead. And uh, uh, feel free to chime in if, uh, if you're just having trouble unmuting your line. Um, let's see, I, I know we had some uh, federal uh, agencies that had uh, registered. Any of our federal partners on the line? Hey there, this is Kerry McElhenney, US EPA Chicago office. Hi. <laughs> Actually, I think you, you may have been the only uh, federal partner that we had register. Uh, any others that have popped on? Okay, I'll move to our um, our non-government uh, organizations that may be on the line. Hi, Melissa. Can you hear me? This is Gary Bellin at American Rivers. Hi, Gary. Yes, we can hear you. Hi, it's Alexander Service with Ducks Unlimited Canada. Hi. Margo MP with American Rivers in Toledo. Hi, Margo. Hi, 
Andrew McCammon, the Ontario Headwaters Institute in Ontario. Hi, Andrew. Glad your, your audio is kicked in. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, this is Kate Hayes. I'm kind of quasi-government, but I'm with Credit Valley Conservation Authority. Hi, Kate. And hi, I'm Jennifer Kleinsmith. I'm from uh, the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority. Hello. Okay, anybody else that didn't get a chance to introduce themselves? Christine Manon and Great Lakes Commission. Uh, John St. Marseille, City of Cornwall. Oh, hi, John. Okay, great. Um, we'll just ask, uh, you know, as we jump into the discussion again, if, if you could just uh, remind folks of your name and, and affiliation before you make a comment or, or talk. Um, that'll be helpful, and, and certainly if uh, if we didn't get to somebody, um, please uh, feel free to chime in and introduce yourselves as we uh, dis begin our discussion. Uh, so we had sent out a, a list of uh, just very kind of general discussion questions that we were hoping folks uh, could take a look at and, and think about uh, in advance of the call. And, um, you know, while these were geared uh, more towards municipalities, um, certainly uh, these are questions that we um, you know, would be interested uh, for feedback and input from, from everybody that's on the line. Um, you know, as I know, uh, folks are all, all delving into this issue of integrated water management. But we'll just uh, start with the first, and I'd, I'd be um, curious to hear from folks, you know, maybe first from the, from the municipalities that are on the line, but then also from others that, uh, you know, given the definition that, that we've uh, provided uh, for integrated water management, uh, you know, who, who feels like they are, are starting to work on it within their community, and, and if so, you know, are, are there specific examples uh, that you could provide us with, with what's being done? And I guess I should mention first, uh, we're, we're going to take the definition that we've provided uh, just as is for now. We didn't want to get into uh, a discussion over that definition today. But if you guys have comments or you know, suggested uh, changes to that definition, we'd, we'd love to hear them. So please uh, email them to, to either me or John. We're going to be putting our, our contact information up at, at the end of the webinar. So please send those, those comments on the definition to us. But, uh, just as a, a starting point, again, um, you know what, what's going on in, in cities out there with respect to integrated water management, um, and some specific examples from the cities that we have on the line, if possible. Well, this is Brenda from the city of Gary. Um, hi, Brenda. And based, hi. <laughs> and based upon the <laughs> the definition that you have, and I'm glad that you guys are looking at it from that. Um, the three um, um, aspects of stormwater management, water supply, and then uh, wastewater. Uh, now we have two of those <laughs> that are integrated. However, we have not. Um, we have some relationship with our water supply, but that relationship is not strong enough for us to kind of coordinate things together in terms of doing some on the ground projects. But we are working with our uh, sanitary district and who has used green infrastructure, um, who is working on their long-term control plan and to use green infrastructure is one of those ways to address uh, the um, combined sewer overflow issue. Uh, mm -hmm. But on the stormwater side, which is the department that I work with and in our urban, green urbanism department uh, where um, that I'm responsible for, we are working collaboratively to do some green infrastructure projects, uh, both on a small scale and on lot size and even a larger lot size um, through several grant programs that we have. Um, so that's what we have going on in terms of integrated. But we are just missing one component of that. 
and I would definitely be interested in working with our water supply company to um, to uh, join us in um, in addressing the um, the runoff as well as the um, any other um, their concerns, the conservation piece, the effectiveness of water usage, all of that. So that's what we have. Um, that's kind of my comment. Mm -hmm. Brenda, is the, the green infrastructure work uh, that you guys have going on, is that um, a, sort of a piecemeal, sort of grant by grant, or is, is it part of a larger plan? So um, we're working with EPA right now. Um, actually, uh, Bob Newport out of the Chicago office. I heard someone from the EPA Chicago office there. And we're looking at a, a greening strategy for the city. We're also looking at uh, because we're using it in several aspects. We're using green infrastructure as in use to eliminate blight uh, on demolished structures. We're using green infrastructure in areas where we have flooding for um, in um, certain areas of the community. And then we've also uh, are using brownfield as an in use of some of our um, brownfield projects. Um, but saying that, is it kind of comprehensive? No, and I'm, we're looking at trying to pull all of that together to really make sense, and then to, um, but we're looking at it from a watershed approach, I believe it is, mm -hmm. and then so that we can incorporate those ideas into our, um, the city's comprehensive plan. Great, thank you, Brenda. Brenda uh, McGarry from American Rivers, can I ask a quick follow-up question? Sure. Go ahead. What is the, the, the timing for putting together that plan? When do you when do you think you'll have the some of that uh, put out and, and, and implemented in a, a broader way? Um, so I'm working with um, uh, we're, we're just really at the beginning stages, uh, just okay. trying to make logic of it. Um, but we, at the same time, there are things happening that we're trying to incorporate sensible ideas or practices into neighborhood scale plans that we're doing. There's a lot of planning activities going on in the city, and I need to be able to um, incorporate those um, our green infrastructure plan into that. Or a neighborhood, I know there's no such thing as a neighborhood scale watershed plan because you have to go within these HUC codes, but I realize that we need to collect certain uh, information or uh, elements of that watershed, of a watershed framework into our planning strategy. So do you have ideas about that? <laughs> well, no, I was just curious as to how, um, how far along in the process you were and, 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 and how that was uh, what your your implementation schedule was, but yeah, you're. It sounds like you're early on and trying to tackle some of the sort of the initial challenges uh, of early planning and how to work with neighborhoods and so on and so forth. So, yeah. No, it, it's good that you you've got something started. I mean, that's the the hardest part is getting yeah, getting people behind you. it. Great, thank you, um, Brenda. I'll just uh, check in to see if uh, our our municipal uh, representatives from Cornwall or, or Mississauga, or if uh, folks from uh, Ray, Racine or Ajax have joined. If if you guys have anything to add in terms of uh, what might be happening in your communities with respect to integrated water management. It's uh, John Saint Marcy in Cornwall. Uh, Thanks for the opportunity. Hi, John. Um, hi. Uh, so we are working on an integrated program. We're, uh, we're taking some baby steps. But one of the things that we wanted to do to really highlight for uh, the public is an action plan that we coined the blueprint. So it, its original component and approach was to deal with some adverse flooding uh, that we have and obviously other municipalities in Ontario and and uh, and our American friends as well had similar um, 
situations. So uh, people were were obviously disturbed with what occurred, and we weren't happy with it. So um, they were looking for a plan, and we've branded it as the blueprint. And um, this has evolved into now our are really our comprehensive integrated water management approach. So we're not only looking at at urban flooding issues, sewer backup, um, looking at efficiencies within our collection network, but we're also expanding that to look at opportunities to look at low impact development for uh, for stormwater initiatives. So we actually have a, a demonstration project that we're we're rolling out this summer, and it's been a, a great opportunity to look at public engagement and and to inform the public a, a lot about infrastructure, some of the challenges that, that we have and some of the things that they can do within their own uh, households and on their own um, lots and residences to deal with not only water efficiencies but also trying to reduce, reduce their own risk of flooding. So it's um, if you go on the City of Cornwall's website and uh, click on the Blueprint link, you'll see that a lot of the information is really focused on our strategy, which is uh, for urban flooding and sewer backup, but we are uh, rolling that out to uh, to other components as well. In terms of, um, as I mentioned, um, just looking at general water awareness and how we can integrate those uh, that information for the public. And we did. Uh, we've had a very successful uh, rebate program. Some um, hundred or 150 applicants to that uh, that they can apply to the city to defray some of the costs of incorporating elements within their own homes to deal with flood risk reduction. Uh, for example, uh, backwater valves, um, looking at uh, east trough disconnections, uh, lot grading around the home, etc. So um, we've, we've had some um, insights as well from Credit Valley. I have to give them uh, credit. Um, they've, uh, Christine, uh, in particular, has been uh, very instrumental in providing some information to us, so we're we're glad to be rolling that out in Eastern Ontario. Thank you, John. Um, uh, I'll just ask real quick: any any other uh, input from from the municipalities on on what's happening currently with respect to integrated water management? No. Um, I, I wanted to jump into the next question. I might might start with you, John, because it sounds like it took a um, you know maybe a significant event or some adverse um, flooding events uh, to occur to maybe um, build momentum for for this kind of work. Is 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 that the case? And um, do you see any other obstacles uh, you know to um, really advancing this more integrated approach within Cornwall? Sorry, John, I don't know if you, you may still be on mute. I think John may be having some technical difficulties, so um, oh. <laughs> give him a, a minute to, to find his way back to us. Sure. Let's see if, see if there are others who have thoughts on what, what barriers and obstacles are out there sure. that you're, you're experiencing. And again, others can uh, join in. It just doesn't have to be uh, just the municipal representatives on the line if, if others want to. Um, I'll ask maybe Gary uh, from American Rivers. I know, uh, you, know you and, and the Mayor's Innovation Project are um, sort of continuing some work on this notion of one water, uh, which is a, um, a, another way to say integrated water management, I think. Um, it, in your, um, you know, the beginning of your work uh, on this issue, what, um, what barriers have you been uh, hearing from folks or obstacles um, to integrated water management? Well, th there's, there's two really. Uh, the, the first is, um, is uh, sort of a cultural issue of getting different city agencies or different stakeholders to, to be talking with each other um, and, and, uh, and understanding each other because oftentimes these different agencies or sta uh, stakeholders like business associations
locations. They're not part of the city necessarily, but they, they are a stakeholder. They're all talking different languages and have different goals, and so getting people to, to be able to talk together in a coordinated fashion uh, has been one challenge. Um, and the other is financing. Uh, so how do you how do you fund this sort of work? Um, it's one thing, you know, people are still trying to figure out how to fund green infrastructure as a decentralized stormwater control device. People, some cities are even still having trouble just funding stormwater management in general. Um, mm -hmm. And so how do you go about financing something this uh, this nature? Uh, it's a different way of doing things and, and finding um, the, the ways to fund it either through your regular tax structures or, or getting capital uh, capital loans through the bonding system. Um, it's been a little bit confusing for some people and a little bit of a challenge in some cases. So those two things are, in, in our view so far, the, the biggest ones we've seen so far. A lot of the technical issues seem to be overcome and, and people are understanding that a little bit better now. It's, um, it's mostly uh, cultural and, and financial. I, uh, let me speak to something we, we did recently. It's John, John Jackson here. And uh, in terms of the cultural one that you referred to earlier, Garrett Gary, is, um, we did a workshop in the city of Guelph a few weeks ago. And this workshop had about uh, 35 people on it. And it was, it was all civil servants. It was people from all of the departments. It was uh, on integrated water management. So we included you know, planning departments, finance departments, the parks department, the roads department, the, the sewer department, the water supply department, all those departments that sat down together for about five hours, I guess we sat there that day, uh, first with a couple of presentations to just sort of stimulate and, and get people into a same situation. And Christine, who was already referred to by John, um, was, was there and, and did a, a great beginning as well. So, uh, a representative from Mississauga who spoke about their experiences with it, but most of the time was spent in them discussing with each other. And it was really interesting because unanimously all of them were saying they never really get the chance to sit down and talk with each other about these things. They really haven't thought about, oh gee, I should be uh, in taking into account the water supply people here. Or uh, they never really had the finance people sitting there at the table hearing why these programs were important uh, as, as the departments were talking about them, except from them individually, to see it in an integrated way. And so we certainly saw it as very useful. We've had some very good feedback on it. And it's the sort of thing we might be able to do elsewhere. But one of the interesting recommendations out of that workshop from those people was we need to do something similar for the elected politicians, and so they get on side and become advocates for it. And in addition, the need to do something similar for what I tend to call the influencers, is the people who aren't you know, elected or, or you know, working directly for the municipality, but people who are you know, working in those municipalities, influencing policy, you know, working for the improvements of it, so that we start getting all of those uh, talking together and with this understanding. Now that, that sounds about right. There's uh, a lot of silo busting that's, that's needed in many of these cases. And it's not that people aren't willing to sit down and talk and, 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 and do that. It's just a lot of times they're not given the opportunity to do so. so that's that's right ask, on, John. Um, oh, sorry, this is Melissa with the Cities Initiative. I'd, I'd ask Brenda. Um, you know, in terms of, of that obstacle, uh, is that something that, that you feel uh, you guys have faced in, Gary? Uh, I know you said it's, you know, you feel like your stormwater and, and wastewater are, are pretty well integrated or maybe at least talking and, and planning together, but I know the water supply side of things um, maybe hasn't been pulled in yet. Right. So it's not that they've been, they're not working with us. It's just not to that capacity. So we are doing some outreach activities together, like they will work with us on clean water or they want to do some information share, get some, a message out to the public. But when it comes to sitting down and working collaboratively on these type of uh, city planning efforts or uh, neighborhood planning efforts, they're not at the table. Mm -hmm. uh, but the mayor is working on that for us, so that's um, a good thing. So I think we'll be able to get it 
maybe within this year we should um, we reached out to the water supply company and want to talk to more of the decision makers and and what their goals are for the city and and that's only because you know it's outsourced we do not control the right. water supply right right company. Now, Deborah, this is this is Gary. Just a quick question: Is the is the water company is that within? Are they a broader uh, organization? So that they they oversee multiple municipalities, or are they within the city? Yes, areas? yes, they oversee multiple municipalities. Actually, it's American Water. Ah, so. all right. Yeah. And do they they own and operate the entire system at this point in time, or are they leasing it? Um, I don't, I'm not sure about how the operation is. Um, yeah. I guess I'd um, ask our, our uh, contacts on the line from uh, the, the conservation authorities if, if you guys have any um, thoughts or, or perspectives on, on barriers or obstacles that you see um, municipalities facing uh, with respect to integrated water management. Muted. <laughs> I don't know. I think Laura, folks, everybody's unmuted through our system. Yeah, but I mean, but but self-muted, I mean. Oh, yeah, possibly. <laughs> Jennifer calling in from Orca. Um, I think we're we're. I mean, I'm participating today because I think our experience is, you know, we're we're on the ver the border. Uh, there's a city in our watershed, about eighty thousand people, but the rest is quite rural. Um, uh -huh. And I think in some ways that there's a bit of still a perception that that's something that like big cities do, or that, that sort of like fancy urban stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so we, you know, and we, we sometimes found the struggle that we are uh, encouraging developers to use more progressive techniques, and then they hit the engineering department of one of the municipalities, and they're just, they're not down with it, they're not comfortable yet, they, they have not seen um, uh, a successful example in the watershed because they can't get approved. Um, so they're like it's even though we say it's not new, it's new to here, which mm -hmm. makes it scary. Um, and uh, you know, from the further east in our in our area you go, it gets really really rural. And um, some of that, so the challenge is in part, in some areas where it's really rural, and there's Canadian Shield and water everywhere. The idea <laughs> of the need for more progressive um, strategies and techniques is just you know, it's just they're not there yet. Mm -hmm. well, uh, Melissa, maybe question. we, Melissa, sorry, Melissa, I'm wondering, oh, we've only got, like, we've only got five minutes left. I wonder, Melissa, yeah. if you might uh, want to jump to the bottom question, which was, what sort of support uh, would you need, sure. what sort of resources would you need to help advance IWM in your community? And uh, we're asking that question uh, because, first of all, uh, there are things that we, as, as our two organizations, may be able to do in terms of focusing our work to help try to help get that sort of support or whatever. So it'd be really useful if if you could talk about uh, your your needs in terms of what it would take to advance IWM. Yeah, and I'd ask if Brenda, if you wouldn't mind, if you have some thoughts. Um you know, can kick it off for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I think that we could pull the right partners to the table. It's a matter of using some type of, as I mentioned before, framework to guide that process. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how could we um, sell it? To the community, and then um, do that stakeholder engagement or community engagement process, and then um, demonstrating how it really uh, works together. So that's what I see, but I'm still stuck on that. I know there's a like a 
a water share checklist, but does uh, the water supply company really buy into that? Or uh, only I know they're permitted to be concerned about water quality, but are they really into being engaged with the community to do certain things? Uh, I have a hard sell with it, and uh, just we're working with uh, some of my colleagues. <laughs> Because it's like, okay, you're using this green infrastructure everywhere. No, we want to be very strategic about it. And I think that if municipalities had that um, kind of that structure, some type of framework to work from, it should show that, you know, we're not thinking about it as here's an opportunity to get some, do a green infrastructure project, but we're doing this green infrastructure project because. Mm -hmm. It helps improve water quality and then show them an example. And I guess you can do that by looking at issues. Great. Thank you, Brenda. Um, anyone else on what you feel um, you need, uh, support, resources, um, in order to advance, even just advance the conversation maybe within the community? And not just for municipalities, but other people as well on the call. Your ideas. This is Kerry with EPA. I guess I, one thing I've observed over the years, and I think I'll just take the example, John, you gave of um, your facilitation in the city of Gulf. I think there does need to be some additional convening facilitator that helps some of these communities bring all the relevant partners together to have that maybe first conversation or, or can continue conversations that have happened in the past um, that can help set the strategy for moving forward with um, integrated water management. You know, I think around the Midwest, U.S. cities, I see a lot of pieces, parts of um, integrated water management, but not probably strategic integrated water management. And I think a lot of it is just mm -hmm. a result of folks not being able to talk together on a regular basis. So. Um, some assistance, I think, probably is going to be necessary to uh, help uh, bring people to the table with the framework um, mindset that uh, Gary mentioned, and um, hopefully get set a path forward from there. Great, thank you, Carrie. Any other thoughts from folks? I, I know we've we've hit the top of the hour, but would like to make sure everybody gets a chance uh, that wanted to to contribute on this piece. All right, I guess hearing none, um, uh, Laura, could you, thank, thank you, uh, Laura's put up our, our uh, contact information. Uh, if, you know, if you guys think of things uh, after the call, I know some folks maybe aren't comfortable um, talking or, or, or bringing points up, feel free to email us. Uh, John's uh, email address and phone number are listed as are mine. Uh, would, would love to, to continue the discussion with folks. Um, you know, again, uh, the work that uh, that we've got over the next nine months or so on the Greater Lakes project um, is, is going to be shaped by by this input that we're getting from folks, and and so uh, look forward to any additional comments that you guys have uh, with respect to any of the the discussion questions that we've uh, put forth. Uh, would love to hear from you guys, um, John. I'll I'll just let you if if you have any closing remarks or statements that you'd like to make. So we, we really appreciate your, your, your input, and, and it really does affect the directions that we take. And uh, in this fall, uh, there is already in the series that uh, Melissa has put together, there will be another workshop uh, on this, uh, specifically on this, at which we will actually be bringing forward some, some tools and, and some uh, things that we are hoping will help uh, be useful resources for you in doing it, and what those are are dependent on things like you've told us today. Uh, so uh, continue to make input to us in terms of what you need in order to be able to be most successful. And hopefully some of those, we obviously can't do everything, but some of those that we'll have together by the fall, and we'll have a workshop this fall to, or a webinar this fall to discuss those with you. 
Great. Thank you, John. Um, so, you know, that brings us to the close. But again, uh, feel free to, to get in touch with either John or myself if, uh, if you have any final thoughts or comments. Um, I'll uh, put in a plug for the, the next webinar of our Integrated Water Management Series, which will be happening on uh, Wednesday, April 15th at the same time, uh, Climate Change Vulnerability Assessments and Green Infrastructure Initiatives to Enhance Stormwater Management and Watershed Planning. We'll be hearing from a few uh, demonstration projects uh, in, um, in cities uh, that look to uh, take a more integrated approach to uh, uh, better managing uh, uh, on a watershed basis, uh, especially given uh, you know, impacts that all municipalities are starting to feel uh, as a result of uh, more extreme weather uh, and climate change. So I hope folks will consider checking that webinar out. Uh, I want to thank everyone again for your participation today. I know it was a bit of a different uh, structure than, than most webinars, but uh, we thought it was important to try and, and reach out to folks and, and get their feedback. So I really appreciate all, all the information and, and feedback that you shared with us today. Uh, and with that, we'll, uh, we'll be signing off. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Gary. <laughs>